pull out themselves some 535,000 barrel per year over year. Good morning, guys, and uh, welcome. It is the 16th of May. This is a live trading with Axia Futures. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is we're just going to have a little quick overview of what's happened overnight. Uh, have a look at you know what's been market moving, particularly in Asia, what the key themes are fundamentally. Uh, they're, we're then going to talk about one or two interesting little correlations, uh, you know, where the early flows have come from this morning, uh, and then obviously move on to the price ladder. Make sure we sort of you know aware of where the key little opportunities can come, and uh, obviously pay attention to some of the key data coming around in around half an hour's time. So. Let's just start off and uh, we come up to the Reuters screen uh, and the first thing we want to pay attention to obviously is the daily calendar. Uh, so as we can see, 9 9.30 this morning we have got very important inflation data out of the Bank of England, or not the Bank of England, but the uh, UK Statistics Office. And uh, obviously we're expecting quite a big uptick, 2.2% uh, core inflation versus the previous 1.8. So all eyes on that, particularly given uh, you know the pound technically is, is, is holding a bit from yesterday. Uh, also looking technically like it could move uh, further to the upside. So yeah, at the moment, key data coming up 9.30 in about half an hour's time. We will obviously pay attention to that uh, as well as trade it in around 28 minutes time. In terms of 10 o'clock, as we can see, we've got German Zoo, ZEW. Uh, again, uh, probably not as important a data piece as it once was. Uh, however, it is effectively a leading indicator of German uh, economic health. So do pay attention to it. In its own, probably won't be creating any major trends in the market. Uh, however, what we do sometimes see is the markets obviously like to wait for any kind of a you know, data pieces or tail risks uh, before we see an allocation uh, of liquidity. So just keep an eye on that. Obviously, that is the, uh, the, the second key data from uh, the morning. And then third, again, probably going to be quite important this morning, uh, is the Q1 GDP from uh, Europe. Now, again, no GDP is a lagging indicator. Uh, it is showing us you know, information from January, February, March. We are now May. So on its own, not too important. However, uh, you know, it will potentially solidify this idea that obviously Europe is starting to grow. Uh, we're starting to see a very strong uh, growth cycle. You know, even though inflation is still relatively subdued, as the central bank is telling us, uh, it does sort of start to lean on this idea that, you know, by the end of the year, the ECB is likely to shift direction in terms of their current uh, policy stance. So, we're going to keep a key eye on that. What is going to be interesting is obviously, uh, you know, at the moment we're going to talk a little bit about the euro in a minute. But there's a real strong bid up in the euro, not just yesterday, uh, not just Friday, but also very early on this morning. So we're going to watch very closely around that 10 a.m. Uh, definitely looking for any kind of potential uh, longs in particularly the euro FX currency. Okay, in terms of overnight, uh, not a great deal to talk about. You know, Shanghai, uh, Asia, a little bit down on the day. The dollar marginally down. Uh, again, we could see oil, gold, yen, uh, euro, pound, all of them marginally up uh, overnight against the dollar. So again, continuing to see that little bit of dollar weakness filter through. Um, yeah, okay, so that's our key little things to pay attention to for this morning. Now let's just talk about something very interesting, a nice little correlation that, uh, that you, know, you want to be paying attention to uh, given uh, you know, the, the data coming up. And that's pretty much what we've seen. If we come across to the, uh, the second uh, uh, you know, sort of internet screen yeah, on the top left, um, what we want to pay attention to is, is the spread uh, between the US tenure and the uh, German tenure. And uh, what we saw yesterday was you know, finally the market's broken out of this very tight range it's been for over a month. Uh, it was this 193 to 2% uh, yield spread between German and US. And we can see, again, not aggressively breaking, uh, but we are starting to see now a tightening in spreads between Germany uh, and uh, the United States. Now, again, we probably would have expected this to happen a little bit sooner given the Macron uh, outcome. We didn't, but it has now broken. Uh, and we are starting to see a very strong correlation between that spread and between the Euro's performance. If you, if you whack up a, a correlation chart, which we can quickly get up, and we put up a correlation between the, the US tenure, or let's do it this way. Um, so let's get a correlation between Euro, USD. Uh, actually, that's going to be a little bit difficult to do. Okay. Um, what we can do rather 
is, let's think about this. Okay, let's leave that for now. I can get another correlation up or I can show you another way we can do the correlation. Uh, but in essence, we're paying mm. attention to that spread. Now, in fact, what I could do is just add a basic Euro dollar chart so we could see the break and uh, Euro USD. Okay, so we can see if we just filter this up a little bit. Um, we can see obviously as spreads fall to that. So obviously as that spread has come down, uh, you know, or tightened uh, since, you know, the beginning of April when uh, the French elections were about to occur, we saw a nice little up move in the euro. We then saw a bit of a bounce in the spreads, a little bit of a sideways bounce in the euro. We then got the result, euro popped up, spreads tightened again. Uh, and ever since then, obviously, the spread's now broken lower and the euro uh, has gone higher. So again, we can see a nice strong correlation there. But in terms of the short term, let's go and have a quick look down at the second trading screen so I can show you what I mean, how it looks on a little bit of a shorter term time frame. Um, okay, so from, from left to right in terms of the charts, what we've got is we've got the US 10-year on the left. We've then got the uh, German Bunds and we've then got the Euro Dollar FX. Now, they're all five minute charts. And the vertical line is annotating effectively, uh, you know, the start or the open of the trading session this morning. Now, if we look, the uh, the US 10 year come the open of, of Europe was trading 16 and a half. So we're currently trading 15. So we're one and a half ticks lower in the US 10 year. At the same time, the German bonds opened up around the 61 level and they're trading almost 16 ticks lower. Now, to equate, you're looking at around 2.2 ticks to one. So in essence, the Bund has underperformed by over 10 ticks at this current point in time. Now, in terms of that underperformance that we're seeing you know, from Germany relative to the US, the Euro at the same time from the start of that underperformance was trading 1.10.30 1, and it's popped up all the way up to 1.10.50. So again, not just yesterday did we see that correlation, that strong correlation, but again we're seeing it today. So keep an eye on that correlation. Note when the markets do pick up on these correlations. The correlations aren't created by algorithms. They're not created by short-term money. They're actually created by institutional flow. It's the, it's the big flow, the big money managers that in essence create these correlations, these strong correlations. So do keep an eye on them. They don't last a day. They do tend to last uh, a couple of days, even months, sometimes even uh, years. So keep an eye on that correlation in the next couple of days. If we do see, continue to see this theme of you know, underperforming Germany versus the US, uh, make sure you're aware of it and make sure you can capitalize uh, on it like I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes. <coughs> okay, so let's get into the charts. Let's stick on this uh, screen here on the left here. This is the euro dollar. Uh, very important. We broke out a very key daily high, 110.36. Now what is important to pay attention to is the low volume area. So between 110.36 and 110.43, market is failing to fill in. It's not able to fill out that break point. So very important if you're a breakout trader, this is an ideal condition for breakouts. You do want to see the market hold breakouts with low volume areas. Uh, and so long as we hold that initiative break, that low volume area, we should continue to see this market maybe not accelerate higher or trend higher, but continue to move toward higher prices uh, over the course of the session. So let's get straight into it. Let's come onto the euro dollar ladder. Uh, we are working a small little position in the market at the moment. Uh, you know, trying to get the timing right, trying to wait for that key data coming out around about 10 o'clock. Um, so again, you know, we're trying to factor in the data points where that potential volatility can come from uh, and combine that with the technical landscape. So right now, obviously, we've got the key break, we've got the low volume area, we've got the market holding uh, at the higher prices. So what we're going to do is we're just going to leave this alone for now. We're not going to be looking to add anything right now or be too aggressive right now. Uh, but once 10 o'clock comes, by all means, we're going to be looking to take advantage of that trade. Okay. At the same time, then, let's, uh, let's cross over to the German Bunds. Uh, let's just get the charts all fixed up here. So German Bunds, very interesting morning so far. Um, yeah, what we've seen, we've seen the inside day break. Uh, so obviously, we've got the breakdown at 46s. Again, no initial volatility. Once the cash came in, however, we've got a little bit of volatility to the downside, but very, very subdued. So ultimately, really subdued price response. So again, uh, we're in full scalp mode again today. We're not looking for anything major, uh, not looking for any you know, massive moves. If the opportunity comes, we're going to try and you know, pick up on it. Uh, however, at the moment, uh, as, as mentioned, the markets are relatively subdued. 
Okay, just if we come up to the, uh, the charts again, let's just have a look at the overview of the German Bunds at the moment. So what we can see, obviously, uh, German Bunds, K-tail, okay, so the K-tail's in place, a very nice early indication that the break potential was on. The market opened, the cash opened, left some single prints, and straight away attacked not just the 46 low of yesterday, but also the Friday low at 41. We can see there was quite a bit of stop out price response down there, but again, not too aggressive. But what is interesting now is we have also left an M tail, which is very, very unusual. It's very unusual to see you know, a K tail <laughs> as well as an M tail on the break of what we would deem uh, a relatively interesting or, or key little reference points around those 46. So again, it's just showing not necessarily that the markets are bad, not necessarily that the markets are, are, are rubbish, but that there's just a real lack of initiative, a real lack of business coming into the markets at this given point in time. So we acknowledge the tail on both sides and uh, yeah, we just have to trade accordingly and make sure we, you know, trading what the market's showing us and, and adapt ourselves to the conditions that uh, are being provided. So right now, very interestingly, again, you know, it's so important to be to be observing things very early on. Uh, it is most unusual to leave a volume, uh, a point of control or a VPOC around the previous day's low. That's very unusual. Uh, it's showing the lack of strength on the break, um, the lack of initiative, the lack of aggressiveness. So we factor that in. It doesn't mean that. You know, obviously at the moment, you know, with a K-tail and single prints, you know, there's still some price pressure toward the downside. Uh, however, if that starts to evaporate, the market starts to move back higher and trade through the 50-51, uh, obviously that K-tail uh, could provide very good opportunities for, for long side trades uh, as we head back in toward yesterday's range. So that's where we're at the moment, guys. Technically speaking, uh, you know, not a great deal to get too excited about. But we do wait for further information and we'll trade the market accordingly. Okay, so what I suggest we do now before we actually get you know sort of stuck into any kind of trades is let's have a quick little overlook or an overview look of the pound versus the uh, the dollar, uh, and let's start off by going through the data so we are well prepared for it uh, in roughly 15 uh, minutes time. So. Do note, obviously, UK CPI is notoriously known to be leaked, uh, so we're going to be paying close attention to this price ladder in roughly seven minutes' time, uh, try and pick up if there is anything uh, that has been leaked into the market. So first thing we do, let's just get a year-on-year -year chart up. Uh, let's have a look what it looks like uh, and where the potential outlier trades are. Okay, so what we've got in front of us here, a nice uh, little line chart of uh, the UK CPI. Now note, uh, obviously today's number is expected around 2.2, .2, so we're going to mark that in uh, around the 2.2. Okay. Now, so important, uh, obviously, all the headlines are going to spin a wonderful story about how UK inflation is at the highest level since 2013. Note, it is expected, okay, 2.2% is expected today. Uh, it will be the highest since 2013. Um, what isn't expected necessarily is a 2.3 or 2.4. So straight away, uh, toward the upside, we're going to make a little note on the sheet. Any number above 2.2, whether 2.3 or above, uh, we would deem an outlier. Why? Because it will be obviously uh, the highest level since 2012. It will also be higher than the forecasts. Obviously the range of forecasts is ranging between uh, uh, 1.9 and 2.5. So 1.9 to 2.5. So again, we also want to recognize any number above 2.5 uh, is an extreme outlier and we will trade that uh, accordingly. So. That's where we are at the moment, 2.3 or above. Let's get that chart back up. Obviously to the downside, again, uh, you know, any number below 2%, that would be quite disappointing for the, the pound. Um, so we will list obviously to the downside, 2% or lower. That gives us a potential outlier towards the downside. Um, obviously when we're talking about these numbers, uh, I will be referencing the cable. Uh, I will be trading the pound over this. Um, 
So everything I refer to, obviously, an outlier will be to the upside. We'll obviously be looking to buy the pound, uh, as that obviously brings forth the potential for a Bank of England rate hike, uh, as well as obviously any number to the downside uh, dampens any expectation now. Just a little word on that at the moment. Currently, Bank of England, eight members. Uh, we're looking at a 7-1 at the previous meeting, which was last week. Uh, and what was interesting was the Bank of England again cited that near-term inflation is expected to rise. So just be very cautious. They are expecting higher inflation. They're expecting it up all the way to 2.75% by Q4 of this year. So it's not all together, together unexpected to see a higher number today. But what it does sort of bring into the limelight is that we've had one of the members, uh, Mr. Saunders, He's told us explicitly that you know, he's very close to that point where he's going to hike for, you know, or push for a hike. Uh, he doesn't believe that they need to wait, um, you know, to see the effects of, of uh, Brexit playing out fully, and he will be willing to hike should he see any further upside in the inflation number. So, just keep an eye on that. That will be the most likely next member to hike in the event of a higher than expected number today. On the flip side, uh, obviously, or not on the flip side, but we also have another hawk in McCafferty. Very much a wage hawk, not so much an inflation hawk, more of a wage hawk. Um, again, he's also leaning on that potential to hike. So those are two fundamental factors. What's also very important to keep an eye on is if we look at the, the, the way the markets responded to the Bank of England last week, we really did see an unwind of expectations post the, uh, the Bank of England. And we, we saw some real aggressive sell side flows in the pound uh, after the, the, you know, the, the 7-1 announcement, which was expected. And that's very indicative of the fact that there are a lot of people starting to play for a Saunders or a McCafferty voting for that, that next rate hike. So just keep an eye on that. Obviously today, you know, imperative, if it does come out 2.3 above, we're looking to be aggressive in the pound. If it comes in 2% or lower, we're looking to sell into the pound. Uh, and that, that's pretty much the game plan uh, for this, uh, this uh, UK number. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move this down a little bit, close that up. And then we're going to move on and start to chart. So again, if we chart the pound, let's just get a little bit of a shorter term time frame. Uh, what will be interesting today, obviously, if we do get a leak number, uh, I will reference that. I will show you what it will look like. And uh, hopefully we can pick up on it and take advantage of it if uh, it does occur today. So if we come down to the main trading screen, let's just quickly chart this market before the number. We have got 12 minutes to go. Uh, so obviously, we've got an interesting little double bottom that's formed uh, late yesterday afternoon as well as in the overnight session. That'll be our first little reference point we pay attention to. Uh, and then obviously, uh, you know, yesterday's high, quite an important little point. So we can obviously reference that as well. So 129.53 is yesterday's high point. And then our next major reference point, and are likely to come with a few little uh, uh, stops above it, is the 130.04 in the future space. Now, the reason it's quite an important little point is because if I scroll back slightly, you will see that when we actually came up here the first time, we had a real surge or a real, uh, you know, stop out of shorts on the way up. So if we could just scroll this back a little bit further, so there we can see it. Nice little short squeeze we had in the pound. That was a good, you know, 200 tick move that we had. The market since then is effectively sitting in a very juicy little sideways flag. So we can see markets obviously just trending slightly higher uh, in a trend channel. Um, so right now if we take out that 130.02 to the upside, uh, we should see some further liquidation of anyone that's still short and we could be on for a nice 30, 40, 50 tick move. So we're going to pay close attention to this data this morning, see if we can pick up on any potential opportunities. Okay. Right, so we can see with that euro now, obviously, it's come all the way back to our entry. We're not too concerned. Remember what I said to you guys? We're not interested in being aggressive this market at higher prices until that 10 o'clock data is out of the way. Uh, equally, we don't particularly want to see this trade back down to 36s. That will take the sting out of the tail with this bid. Um, so right now, we're just going to sit on that, leave it alone. Uh, what we could see, obviously, if we do get uh, a little bit of a higher print in uh, the CPI, you know, a bit up in the pound is going to drag the euro with it. 
Uh, why? Well, because obviously the euro has been outperforming the uh, pound, so any bid up in that pound is going to drag the euro up. So again, if you're not a pound trader, you know, if you don't trade the UK sterling and you do trade the euro, just be aware of that. Um, you'll be able to take good advantage of that and hopefully you'll get to see how that plays out in the next couple of minutes. Okay, so we're just going to zoom this out a little bit. And we're going to start to focus the on the number on ahead. Perspective flat from 0.47 by year on year PPI input prices seen at 17 percent from 17.9 percent. This is the PP, PPI output prices year on year seen at 3.47, one for one seen at 0.2, and core output for PPI year on year seen at 2.5, core output one for one seen at 0.2 percent. Okay, so if you come up to the top here, um, onto the Reuters screen again, uh, you're going to notice I've got a little bit of a footprint chart up here. This is just to note some of the key little reference points on the way up. So I've got this just so that I can uh, reference any kind of uh, you know, early movement in this market going into the number. So I'm watching particularly the delta here, you know, any kind of early sell side or aggressive buy side, uh, and that will be a very early indication that something is potentially leaked. Cool. Cool, right? cool. cool yeah, yeah. So yeah. what Monty's saying with 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 syndication, banks usually get a heads up. Let's just swap these two around. <laughs> so yeah, just a few things guys before we actually get going on this. Um, is pay attention to number one, the um, the pound that is in the middle here. Watch the price action. Uh, you'll see me get aggressive if the number is 2.3 or higher. Uh, likewise, you'll see me get um, you'll see me get. And you'll see me get very quickly uh, offering the market if, in the event, it comes out um, any uh, much lower than expected, around two percent. Sorry, just focusing on the number here and actually preparing for this. So I got a little bit quiet now. Um, Going to let Johnny kind of just do some some camera work there, play around a little bit, and uh, you guys can buckle and get ready for this number. You're going to see how I'm going to execute this. Uh, I will show it to you, obviously. I will talk it through with you afterwards. Um, so yeah, enjoy the show, and uh, hopefully we get something. Again, note, uh, you know, if we don't get anything, if it comes out exactly as expected, well then so what? That's the game. Uh, but we have to take advantage if the opportunity comes, uh, and not try and force the opportunity. Again, that's been flagged by a couple of analysts on the street. 
the contestant again to spot six percent for year one year expected to come in at two spot three percent year one year one spot eight percent prior month for month it's into zero spot four reminder the cpi h number year on year for april consensus two spot six percent that's the one that includes housing costs but still not officially part of the national statistics as of yet rpi year on year consensus three spot four ppi inputs year on year consensus three spot four percent Correction, 17% for the PPI inputs, the output consensus 3.4, on the account price index consensus 5.3%. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very Very little going through this pound at the moment. No, it was just yesterday's high. Don't don't get. That's not. That's not uh, anything big. The euro went higher, and that's taken yesterday's high. There's no real buy side absorption here. I think if you if you get the miss here as well, man, 2.1, don't be shy selling the pound here. Okay, I think you can get 30, 40 ticks if it misses as well. There'll be some expectation, especially if the street's expecting a higher number here. of UK CPR data saying on year over year expected 2.6%, the core year on year expected 2.2%, as for the MR month on month, that's seen at 0.4, the core month on month also seen at 0.4%. Twenty seconds to release of UK CPI. Two point seven percent, two point seven percent of the year on year figure, one tenth above the two point six percent expected core year on year, two point four percent as two tenths above the two point two percent expectation. CPI month on month point five percent as one tenth above what we expected. As for the core month on month, that is point five percent, also one tenth above. RBI that comes in year on year, three point five percent, that is one tenth above. 
like five cent one per month, that's mm. in mind. If you are able to one month, come to like one percent, slightly high, year on year, like sixty or one six percent, that is a touch softer than the seventeen percent expected. If you are able to one month, four percent, ninety two, three point six percent, if you are able to one month, four percent, driven by transport costs. Reflecting the fact that Easter vacation fell in April as widely planned, oh. airfares rising 19% on the month. The owner said that airfares were the main oh. other contributors oh. to oh. CPI oh. in April. Oh. Clothing, glass, oh. and electricity oh. also boosted the reading. That's some of the other figures. The PPI core output month oh, month came at 0.5%, percent that's 3 cents above the 0.2% percent expected. Year on year, so I'm not going to rise since 2013. Oh, right. also noted that UK March house prices were up 4.1% year on year versus 5.6% in Feb. That's the weakest gain since October 2013. Oh, in London, March prices have seen an up 1.5%, the weakest on the growth. Uh -huh. This is all the RPRE X resale prices year on year came at 3.8%. What? That was 4 cents above the prior 3.4%. Okay guys, so what we've seen there is a classic little profit take straight off the numbers, straight off the bat. Um, unfortunately, that did not play out according to plan. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the cable won't resume this trend, so you've just got to wait for those buyers to come in. Obviously, everyone's taking profit off of the number. Um, a lot of people obviously had a very high expectation that number was going to come in higher. It came in higher, and all we've seen is a straight offer off that number. So. Just got to be cautious here. Yeah, we've seen quite a strong delta. If we come up to the charts, uh, we can see a little bit of delta accumulation forming here. Um, so one of two things is going to happen. Either the market's going to find some liquidity, or it's going to find some buy side support, and the market will rotate back higher and take out that high. Uh, or we could potentially take out this level, take a few little you know, shorter term stops out of the market, wash down, and then reverse. So either way, we switched on for both opportunities here. Um, you know, altogether, uh, it's a strong, strong beat for the inflation number. You know, the dollar is weak. Uh, the pound was bid going into that number. So, again, we're not going to give up yet on it. It's unfortunate it didn't quite play out like we expected, uh, but these things happen. So, let's just um, let's just be ready in the event something does come out for us. watching very closely and if we do get a kind of a stop run we are going to be very aggressively fading that stop run uh, cable should not be stopping lower uh, on that number it's merely just a little bit of short-term positioning that's stopping out and we're going to take advantage of that if anyone does decide they're going to stop out of those trades so we're going to keep a very close eye uh, if we go back on the morning session we've got no real key levels in the pound um, so we're just going to watch the price action and see if this does stop out at any point to the downside.
so we can see German Bund's now. Um, German Bund's very interesting. Have taken out uh, the low this morning, badly auctioned low, um, and since gone bid. So again, obviously Bund's had a relatively nice offer down with the gilts. Probably a little more straightforward than the uh, than the pound. Uh, unfortunately, this happens when there's quite a lot of pricing expectation in the market. Uh, it's never going to quite move like the way you want it to. Um, so again, we just accept that as part of the game, and um, we kind of move on. So again, we can really see obviously someone's come into this market in the pound. Uh, if we come up to that top screen again. Um, Again, we can see there's quite a little bit of selling, a little bit of profit taking. Someone's still taking profit in this market. Um, hence, at the moment, the market is trying to sort of find a little bit of support. It is running into something. Uh, we can see that entire delta has been unwound now. And um, yeah, let's see how the market responds. Uh, if it does stop out, that's the key. That's the last opportunity we have now in this market uh, before obviously it starts to settle into a bit more of a range. Um, so just one note on stops, guys. Stops yeah. don't mean anything. Stops don't mean that fair value shift. It stops is just an unwinder positioning. So just understand that just because a market moves aggressively in one way doesn't make it trend. Um, you know, if it's positioning that's making it move that way, then uh, you know it's very good opportunities sometimes to take the other side of that trade. As for the uh, the euro, obviously we've still got that position on. We can see that you know even with that number, uh, the euro has held its bid. It's not gone off it again. Uh, we've now broken above that 54 half little area that we made early on this morning on the cash open. Um, so again, the question is, does it sustain it right now? Uh, the euro is moving nicely, holding that break point. So we can actually move our stop now all the way to break even. Uh, no need to see that market come all the way back down. Um, so we're going to move that up and we're just going to keep focusing on this pound, see if we can pick up some, uh, some cheaper longs and um, see what happens. The Spanish bill auction here, so the three month bills, bids cover comes in at 3.1, that's in line with the previous nine month bids cover comes in at 4.1, uh, is sort of below the prior 4.4. In terms of the total amount sold, they're 1.6 billion euros of three and nine month bills. We're expecting between one and two billion, so just above the midpoint of the range. Okay, with regards to obviously this euro, you know, technically we've spoken about that break point uh, and that low volume area. Now, the tempting thing to do sometimes is to scalp a market that's showing a technical break, and that's it's almost a, it's almost a very uh, unnecessary thing to do. When you get key technical breaks and they've shown the break and you've had the initiative, you know, those are the ones you want to sit on, those are the ones you want to just be patient, put the stop in. Um, you know, if you get stopped out, so what? Uh, more often than not, it's going to be scratch anyways. Um, so we leave that alone, we're not interested in that. Um, you know, if we can get some sort of a technical structure where we can add, we add. Otherwise, we just let it go and see what it does over the course of the day. Um, the real one we want to pay attention to now in this pound, we want to see it find some technical support, maybe find some stop outs to the downside um, and hopefully get on it and let it distribute out at the moment. You know, quite a strong sell off that top. Uh, it was sold off the number. Um, so the question is if there are still a couple of longs, some, some naughty longs still holding, um, or more hoping rather than holding. Um, so we're going to watch this for another couple of minutes. We've got five minutes to go in the stream. Um, so we're going to watch it for a few more minutes, see what happens, see how it plays out, see if we can try and get one more trade off out of this market uh, and then take it from there. At the moment in terms of the buns, again, uh, just you know, a lot of people always say to me, how do I know where to trade? Well, it's simple. 
um, the auctioning process is just not good enough. It's not strong enough for me to want to trade that market right now. Uh, happy to be scalping it, but not, no interest in, in a directional play. Um, what is interesting, though, is we can see that guild, in fact, has almost retraced the entire move. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, so we can see the guild started at 60s on the inflation number, dipped down to 38, and it's almost back there. So, again, you know, if we're going to trade the buttons, we want to lean on those guilds. You know, back above those 60s, if we take out that high, that's going to drag the bund up higher with it. So, again, we want to pay attention to that. But like I said at the moment, we're just watching this pound, see if we can pick up any buyers, uh, and hopefully, actually, if we can pick up some, some uh, stop outs, that'll make the trade a little bit easier, a little bit more lucrative for us. So we're going to watch this carefully, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get something and uh, try and make back some of those uh, little losses we've taken on the, uh, on the data point. All right, guys, I think what we're going to do is, um, I think we're going to call it a wrap. I think the markets have gone quite quiet now. Um, no point in trying to force anything out. Um, you know, hopefully you've, you've caught a little bit of an understanding as to you know, how we prep first thing in the morning, uh, you know, how we prepare the charts, how we make sure we're just ready to trade and execute. Uh, again, based on what we're seeing, you know, we're day traders, we're not, we're not hedge funds, we're not portfolio managers, we're not gurus, we have no clue uh, where the market will be one day from now, one week from now. We're merely just trading what we see, uh, understanding the landscape and executing accordingly. And you know, that is our job ultimately, uh, is to execute according to what we see and what we understand. Um, so let's leave it there. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the session. Uh, again, if you have any questions, obviously you can uh, email uh, info at arxiafutures.com. Otherwise, again, we'll catch up again next week. Uh, good luck for the rest of the training session, and uh, we'll see you again soon.